Welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy your treasures off you for a cash sum on the table today. £250, and that is no. what I want to give. No, I'll take 350 If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, no way. Gamble. Go to auction. See if we can get you a little bit more money there. At 3.20, sells at 3.20. I'll be on hand at all times to help and advise. Today the show comes to you from Gainsborough in Lincolnshire. There's a fabulous crowd of people here. They are eager to sit down with our dealers. They really want to do business. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. Are ready, our dealers are ready. Let's get some business underway. I do know it's a rare piece of white friars. I bought it three, four years ago on a car boot, and I'm here hoping to sell it. Middle name White Friars. Love it, buy it all day long. Okay. It's one we know is genuine, Just don't we? Met your man. It is genuine, yes. Where did you get it from? Car boot. Really? Yes. I want to come with you. Whereabouts? Oh, no, no secret. No trade secrets. Oh, well done <laughs> you. Do you collect white fries or...? I do like glass. I have quite yeah. a lot of different pieces of glass. Uh, it was just something I bought, but then I found out it's quite a rare one. Well, Geoffrey Baxter, who designed this white fries range, he used to use tree bark and nails and things mm -hmm. like that to get this effect. Yeah. And the way you tell a, a real white fries is by the pontil mark, which is down the bottom here. Right. And it's sort of ground off. But I'll be honest with you, they are faking white fries left, right and centre. Mm. So you've got to be very careful if you're out there buying it. So you want to sell it today? If the price is right, yes. Okay. Well, uh, bearing in mind I've got to make a profit, Shirley, so don't be too mean on me. Yeah. 50, 100, 120 quid. That leaves me about a 40 quid profit. Not How enough. much more do you want, Shirley? Quite a lot more. Really? Yes. Here we go, then. You know I like it, Shirley. On 40? No. I've got more. Not enough. I've got more, David. I've got more. Now then, the Diamond Geezer, he knows about things 20th century. This is his cup of tea. He's got books all over the place on subjects such as white friars. Two to three hundred pounds is what the specialists say. I have more, Mr. Dickinson. OK, come on. I'm staying here to watch you. 160. Still not happy, are Two to three. 180, and that is my final offer. Give her 200 quid. No. All right. 200. OK, now Stitch I'm going like to like say up. this. I know that you had a cracking deal when you bought it. Well, I shouldn't say cracking, should I? Oh, no, no. So you had a great deal when you bought it. Have we to tell him? Three quid, I reckon. Well, you're close, Hoggy. It was two. Ah. Get out of it! Get that down, Hoggy. You've placed yourself. So that's why I'm saying you've had a bit of a tickle, you've bought it cheaply, and you've made a very nice profit. And that would be a very nice gesture and a good deal. So, Shirley, have we got a deal at 200 quid? We have got a deal, Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> there go in my collection. A £198 profit. I keep that car boot location under wraps, Shirley. Over to Cheryl Hayden. She's shedding some light on her next deal. Very unusual Chinese stroke Japanese deco period lantern. Not really seen anything like this before, so I'm going to try and buy it. You're going to have to try hard, Cheryl. Ken knows exactly what he wants. I'm expecting about. 200 for it. That's about what I paid. Tell me all about your uh, lantern. I've had it about seven years. I bought it from a, a dealer actually. I saw it lit up in the window and 
I had to have it. Took your fancy? Yeah. Well, very unusual. I would have thought date-wise, it has, although it's Chinese, it almost has this slightly art deco look it, to it. I was told it was art deco. Very 1930s. 1920, I was told. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know. Touch earlier. You know better than me. And the, the glass is crackle, like a crackle. Crackled, yeah. Very typical. We saw a lot of art glass around this time with this crackled finish. Yeah. And anything Chinese as well, people were starting to travel the world and yeah. it was, you know, very fashionable to bring something back from the Far East. Yeah, I was told today these are all hand painted. Well, it looks to I be all... I didn't know, I'm, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it is. All the yeah. painting here, if we just touch this very... You can almost feel the paint can, on, on the can, figures. Yeah. What would you do with the money if you sold it to me today? Anniversary, end of the month. Oh. 53 years. Oh, there'd be a lot of pressure on you then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get some money out. Okay, off we go. 20, 40, 60 pounds. Doesn't buy the lid. Doesn't buy the lid? No. Doesn't buy the lid? Fabulous. I'm just thinking where I'd put it in my home because I'd find somewhere for it. 150 to 200 pounds is the estimation. If I was you, I would get 100 pounds, 150 pounds down and I'd get it off home because that's a winner. <laughs> uh. I've not quite finished. Oh, okay. Right, Ken. Let's take it up to the 100. Yeah. 100 pounds in cash. No. no. 120. No. 140. Is that making the anniversary present look a bit, uh, a bit more it's interesting? A bit it's, it's, things are looking better, yeah. It's uh, looking better. A little bit. Have more. you bought it yet? Not yet, David. How much have you got down now? 140 pounds. If I was you, I'd kind of put 160, 170 down and think, I'm buying it. And that's it. There, mm. Cheryl. What else have we got here? 150. Another tenner. <laughs> 150. I'm Did stuck. I hear you say another tenner? Don't even <laughs> think about it because you will never lose money on that. There you go. So if I take that away and with 160 as I've been beaten and bullied into the deal, it's we've yours. got a deal. If it breaks on the way home, I'll kill him. That's 160 Ken. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's only been on the wardrobe for the last three years and I'm quite happy to take the money. I did not want to pay £160 so I hope it brings me a bit of good luck, his advice. Back to the dealer's den and a slice of the action for Dave Gage. I wouldn't know if it was rare or not this particular one. I mean there's lots of features on these things that you've got to know lots about. It's a bit of a subject on its own, really, but I do get asked for them. Dorothea, this is David Hagney. Yes, I know you will. Do you? Oh, yeah. You've seen me before, have you? Yes. Good. <laughs> well, you've brought a sword. Was this to keep the burglars away? Well, I've never thought of it. No. It's a bit heavy. <laughs> and this is something you've had a long time, Dorothea? I didn't see it until um, we were moving house. It was up in the loft from my father-in-law's time, he'd put it there. It had been owned by a boat builder on the um, Trent. Oh yes, yes. He went out for a drink, didn't come back for three years. Three years? Yeah. And um, he'd been um, press ganged. Press ganged, oh yes. Because in those days, the, on the, the Trent. Ship, ship would come into the basin of the Trent, so they grabbed call him. in a few bodies and off. Off they went. That's what happened to him. And he landed at war across the Channel, I suppose. Yes. I don't know if it was Napoleonic, but I'd have thought it was one of those before. That was the sword he had when he came back. What a lovely story. It's in very nice condition. And this is an early 19th century sword, so date to 1830 or something about there, yeah. 1820. Shagreen handle uh -huh. from a stingray which they used on knives and yeah. all sorts of things. Well, you get a good grip, don't That's you? That's it, yeah, you get a good grip, yeah. yeah. I do like it. Yeah. And I'd like to buy it off you, so shall I get the gelt out and see if we can... Uh, right out. Attempt to. Yeah. 
Well, shall we start off with 20, 40, 60? You're not smiling yet, Dorothea. No, I won't smile until you bring the 100 pound notes out. <laughs> it felt quicker for you. <laughs> You're a sharp girl, you are. Well, there we are, look. 100 pounds. Is that good? No. I'd better get one of these bigger ones out then, Dorothea. I should think so. 150. That's not sounding bad, is it? I think if you double that. Oh. <laughs> and I think 50. you understand more about swords than I do. I thought it was Probably about... living with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say 200 pounds. And have we had a deal? No, if you um, put another 100. On another 100? Yeah. Right, Dorothea, I've offered you £200. Yes, and I've declined. You've declined, yeah. right. Take the money, don't, don't let him push you like that. No, no, I'm not. 250 to 350, three to 400 pounds. David, you're going to have to <coughs> cut through a little bit more if you want to buy this. Otherwise, this young girl and myself will be going to auction. How many years young, Dorothea? <coughs> uh, 91. 91. 91. Marvellous. And looking like that, a Bobby Dunkler. I was going to say, you'll soon be there. <laughs> Unbelievable. OK. Dave, you yes. need more money on the table, well, otherwise myself and Dorothea are going to auction. Look, I'm going to take this in slow motion. I'm going to say 220. Oh, don't prolong me, Agony. You've well, got to put four more on there for another 100. Shall I tell you what I'll really give? What? £250, and that is what uh, I want to give. No, um, I'll take 350 I, I could have done that on a Wednesday I think tonight. you want to go to auction, don't you? OK. I want to wish you good luck at the auction. Thank you. It's been delightful to meet you. Yeah, bye-bye for now. Arms and swords aren't my forte, really, but uh, I think it might do all right, though. How confident is today's auctioneer Colin Young? I think it's something that the collectors are going to want to go just that extra mile on. So once we've got them drawn in, that 350, yeah, that's possible. Coming up. We're going to go straight in at top estimate, 400 bid. Straight in at the top estimate, so relief. So 420, now, 420, 420 How 40, much more will 460, the sword fetch? 480, 500, they like 550, it. 550 bid. Before the break, we saw our seller Dorothea turn down David H's bid of £250 for the 19th century so, sword. Um, I'll take 350 I think tonight. you want to go to auction, don't you? OK. Let's see if it's now, worth a stab in Selling it £25, pounds, all done. The reserve is £300. The estimation is three to four hundred pounds. If we don't sell it, I think David's going to be in a bit of trouble. So let's hope we sell it after giving that advice to Dorothea. Huh. Hundred years it's been in the family, ninety-one years young. Tell you what, you're a bit of a Bobby Dazzler girl, you are. <laughs> Here we go. So we're going to go straight in at top estimate, four hundred bid. Straight in at the top estimate, so relief. At £400 bid, at 420 now, do I see it? £400 bid, 420 now, 420, 440, 460, 480, 500, 600 bid. That's 600. Well, I never. £600. 650. At 650, 700 again now. At 650, is all the bit of 650. Any more bids now? Seven, surely. £700 from anybody now. 700, thank you. 700 bid. At 700, 750, 750 bid. Turn down 250 on the Duke's advice. Fortunately, we're up to 750 quid. At 750, are there any more bids? Nope. We're done and finished then, and we are going to sell at 750 pounds. Now, the gamble has gone down at 750 pounds. We do have some commission to take away from that. And the time we've taken that away, we are left with 615 pounds. Now, Dorothy, what's your first reaction? Shock. <laughs> Shocked. But pleased, I hope. Absolutely shocked. Any idea what you might do with this um, sum of money, £615? Well, I've got all sorts of things. The children, mainly. Yes, OK. You're going home with £615, which is going to be given to the family, to the children. That is the real deal. And David Hayney, you missed out on one here, mate. After Dorothea's triumph, let's get back to the dealer's den. 
I'm feeling very nervous, but I'm looking forward to the outcome of how much the pot's going to be worth. A nice commemorative Moorcroft strike. I have to say at this point in time, my offer is going to be limited because of the damage on the rim. Oh Hello, Mark. Hello, Jan. Nice, nice to meet you. you. And would you like to tell me about this object you brought in today? Well, I don't actually know a lot about it. I was clearing my mum and father's house out and there was a, a box with a load of things in it. And I've just kept them in the garage for quite a few years. And um, my son came round and said that he thought it was a bit unusual and that it was Moorcroft. And, and then when I realised this was coming here at Gainsborough, I thought, well, I'll bring it just to see what it is worth. Well. It's a very nice piece, mm -hmm. um, and actually it's incredibly weighty, Yes, um, and I think that's because it's quite shallow here yes. in the middle where the matches would have gone, because it is indeed a match strike, yes. and of course there's a lot of pottery sort of filling up that area right. here, so that's why it's so weighty. We've got Edward VII on the front, and it's actually a commemorative piece commemorating him coming to the throne mm -hmm. 1901 you can see Queen Mary on the back and here you have it signed by William Moorcroft which is also nice it's a Moorcroft factory yes. which is obviously well known and it is in fact very very nice quality mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think I need to put some money down Thank on the you. table that's 20 no. 25 pounds down on the table no we don't think much about that, Margaret, do we? No, we don't. 150 to 200 from both the auctioneer and from the independent valuers. So we're, we're way out. Yes. So I'm going to say it's got to be up over 100 pounds to be really considered. So yes. I'll leave it with you. If we don't get that kind of money, we need to place it in the auction. Thank you very much. Right, well, I must admit, that's gone way over my head. I had no idea that no. they reckoned it in that sort of money. They obviously couldn't fail to miss this little nick yes. on the top here, which I feel actually is quite significant. Yes. Collectors do want things absolutely perfect, yes. and I think that plays a vital role in how much I put down. So I'm going to take the five away, and I'm going to put down 40 pounds. Think no, that you're still you. looking yeah. up to the, yes. the 100 pound yes. mark. I'm going to stick my neck out. I'm going to put down another 20, and I'll say that I think I'd be happy to stop there. I think I'd really like to take it to auction. You would. Yes, please. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you. I think the chip is a very, very big minus in my eyes but it'll be very interesting to see what it makes at auction and I wish her all the best of luck and I hope it does make that money. 25 but a bit 18 euros now, 25 18 euros then selling at 25 pounds, all done. The reserve is 150 pounds, 150 to 200 is the oh, estimate. Yeah. What do you think, is it gonna sell? I don't know. <laughs> it's an experience and it's been a lovely day out. So. Is it too ambitious, the reserve of 150? I don't know, I don't think so, it's Moorcroft. 80 to go then, surely quite a rarity. 80 bid, 5, 85, bid 90, at 90 bid, 5 anywhere else now, at 90 pound a bid, 5, 95, 100, 100 pounds bid, and 10 now, 110. Still got to get to 150, it's slowed down. 120, 130, at 130, 140 now, the bidders appear to now be on strike. It's close to the 150. 130 all done and finished at 130. We seem to have run to a very low ebb on this one, and for that reason, I'll have to withdraw it. It didn't make the reserve of 150. Perhaps the 150 was a little bit too ambitious. So you turned down 60 quid. Yeah. Well, never mind. There's another auction on another day, so we'll try again. OK. Yeah. Well, you heard what Margaret said. On the day, I'm going to award the real deal at 130 quid, even though it didn't sell. Back to the hobble in the den. Royal Ducks, great name, great product. It's had restoration. It's going to affect the price. Mm, not sure if Julie spotted that. Let her down gently, it Hoggy. Is, yes. Where did yeah. you get it from? Um, I actually was given it by my partner, who um, has had it for quite some time. Right. I've owned it for about four years, yeah. three, four years. So, Why are you selling it today? Um, basically because I'm moving to France and um, and this just doesn't fit in in my okay. house in France. So. 
Royal Ducks was Czech's vacuum company. Right, okay. And uh, they're also quite well known for their Art Deco ladies. Mm. In the 1920s and that, they sort of hit the highlights with their lovely Art Deco ladies. Oh, okay. And then later on, they went into animals. Mm. And the way they sculpture their animals and the way they pop them, very, very good. Almost mm. like a Czech's vacuum Royal Dalton. Right, okay. Easily recognisable as Royal Ducks is the raised triangle mark at the bottom there. Yeah. So even if you don't know the names and everything, yeah, you Royal could Ducks, see. raised good. triangle. Okay. Still being made today. Mm -hmm. Still quite collectible oh, today. They? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed was this bit here has okay. had some restoration. Now that's not unusual, mm -hmm. but a collector would downsize the price on that. Nice. Okay. That would affect the price, and I'm sure you know. Anything restored, mm -hmm. the price Perfect. is affected. Yeah, yeah. Sure. If it wasn't restored, mm -hmm. I would be giving you about 150 quid for it. 150? Mm -hmm. Around that restored. price. Okay. If it wasn't restored. Mm -hmm. I'm generously going to give you 20, 40, 60, 70 quid for it. I know that when I um, took it out here, it was very popular. I know what you're saying, Julie, but what would you want for it? Maybe 90. I've got, so I'll tell you what, I'll meet you halfway, 80 quid. Not 85, are you sure? No, definitely sure. Okay. <laughs> nice try, though. Thanks Thank a lot. You. I'm sorry about the restoration. Uh, just make sure it goes to a good home, then. I will. Coming up, jams in a very treaty. strict yes. mood today. That needs clamping together, and this needs a new foot. It's also had woodworm at one point. Yes. Does any seller stand a chance? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Lots of Lincolnshire locals doing battle in the dealer's den. Some jewellery is up next for Cheryl. But we like a bit of gold, we'll try and buy that. But how much is Linda looking for? At least £180, hopefully more. You've brought a gold bracelet. Yes. What, is there a story that you know? It's not mine, it belongs to a friend who was a little bit too shy to come on. She's in the audience at the moment. <laughs> Hiding. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's 76, but the bracelet actually belonged to her mum and it was her 21st birthday present. So oh. it's been in the family for quite a long time. Why is she thinking of selling it then? She wants a new vacuum cleaner. Oh, that's not very glamorous, no, is it? It's not no. like a holiday or a going out for dinner or something. No, she'll like it though. <laughs> well, it'll do. It does a job, I suppose. Yeah. We all need them, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to pick it up here. We do. We've seen these lots and lots of yeah. times. It's quite a very common's not the right word to use, but we do see this bracelet. It's still made today as well. This yes. particular style. And then you've got the little like, lock thing. It is hollow, it's not weighing an awful lot. Right. And we do base our values today on the actual weight. It is wearable, it's not something that we would probably want to scrap, but that is how we work the price out. Yeah. And it's not particularly heavy. Right. So I'll get some money out and see if uh, we can get her a new Hoover. Okay. So I'm sure she's given you a price that she would like. She has. £100 to start. It was a little bit more than that. A well, actually, bit quite a bit more. Oh, quite than a that. bit more. They yeah. always say a little bit more, but really they mean an awful lot more. Yeah. Right, okay. 120 No, no, she wants more than that. She wants more she than does, that. Yes. 140 A little bit more. Come running out a bit of a, a little bit more. One four five. She was looking for a little bit more. A little bit more. No. She's looking for a little bit more, David. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the value of the gold is about one hundred and eighty pounds worth. Yes. They vary the estimates between probably about one hundred and fifty to two hundred and twenty. Right. Um, I think if you get one hundred and sixty quid on the table, Cheryl will be able to take that and I think sell it. I think it's too good to scrap. And I think you'll be about right. I don't think you'll get more by going to auction. Well, 160. So if I take that five away, put another 20 down, that, we've, we've that got a deal. Be fine, and yes. we're all happy. Yes. Let's do that then. Okay. There we go. £160 Thank pounds for the vacuum cleaner. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Over to the action in the den. 
I'm just feeling a little bit nervous, but um, I hope the dealer likes it as much as I like it, and I've enjoyed it for a good few years now, and I hope I get a good price for it. So Hello, Monica, we. I'm Jan. Please Monica, meet, meet Jan. So, would you like to tell me a little bit about this tree? We bought it from a house sale about 30 years ago, and I've enjoyed it since. And what did you use it for? Because obviously, I didn't it's... use it for anything. I, I just had say... it. I just had it standing up at the end yes. of my mantelpiece. Because obviously, it's quite small proportions, and you're yes. limited to what you could use it for. I suppose you could have it on a hall table to put the post on in the morning, or cards, or something yes. like that. Yes. But let's have a little chat about it. I believe it's a French little piece. Yeah. And this is all gilded metal. Yeah. And this, I believe, is king wood, which was a French wood. Yeah. And I think it's probably like turn of the century, about sort of 1900, 1880. Yeah. I'm willing to make you an offer. And we'll see if we can tempt you to sell it today or whether it's going to go back on your sideboard or mantelpiece. I'm not going to take it home because uh, I'm saving me money. I'm going to buy a bigger tractor. I've got a lot of grass to cut and I'm going to buy a bigger tractor. Oh, right, a tractor. <laughs> yeah. My goodness, that's a, that's a big lawn. It is, five acres. OK then, Monica, so here yep. we go. Let's see. 20... £30. Right, well, take away the 10 and I'll pop down another 20 to make it £40. Probably might just get petrol for the tractor. You see, here's the thing. When you turn it over... Uh, yeah, it's got some damage. You have got a big split. Now, yeah. if I was buying this, this would bother me. Yeah. It's also had woodworm at one point. Yes. I know it's not drastic, but it needs treating. Yes. That needs clamping together, and this needs a new foot. So yeah, it's always been like that. Yes. So for my mind, there's a lot of messing about. I think what I'm going to say to you is, I'd be happy to put down another ten pounds and make it fifty pounds, and see what you think about that. When I arrived today, I, had, I did have a figure in mind, and that figure was at least £100. Right. So even if I took that 10 away and put down another 20, it's not really going to tempt you, is it? No. Well, I think I'm going to go to auction. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. I'm disappointed with the offer, of course, but uh, I'm really looking forward to the auction and hope that I shall get a better price nearer to the 100 that I was hoping for. Let's hope the sale room's red to help them along with that tractor form. Now, there is a reserve of £100. It's a smart, decorative-looking item, but is there someone here that wants something highly decorative for their home? Well, let's find out. It's coming up now. Um, we start the bidding already at £70 bid, at £70 bid 5, 75, 80, 5, 85 bid, 90 to a seat, 85 pound a bid 90, look at what we're selling here at 85 pound a bid 90, at 90 pound a bid to a seat, no. It's around, but not quite. £85 bid, 90 anywhere else now, at 85 pound a bid 90 now to a seat, at 85 are we all done? At 85 you're all out in the room then, you're out on the net, all done and finished at £85. I'm afraid I have to withdraw that then, ladies and gentlemen. So, bad news, it got up to £85, didn't sell because it didn't make its reserve, so... It's going to have to go home again. On the day, I'm still going to award the real deal to the £85 that was bid here in the room. Nevertheless, it didn't quite make the reserve of 100 quid, but that was the real deal. Tough day at the auction, and David gets tough in the den. I don't think that's anywhere near enough. You're going to have to reject that. Let's see if we can tick tock and ring a few bells at the auction. Will Dapper Day be dishing out more dust? As we come to the end of a great day in Gainsborough, there's time for one final deal with Barbara and David. Interesting, uh, but there's been lots of firms that have copied these clocks and it's not so easy to sell to collectors because they like the older things, but lovely quality. I'm hoping to get between £1,000 and £1,500 for it. I don't think David's too keen on this clock. The Duke and auctioneer Colin Young have their eye on this deal. Pleased to meet you. Now you brought a lovely clock in here. Tell me something about it. Well, I was a clockmaker and um, 
and I bought this clock off my boss. You were a clockmaker? I was, yeah. I've never met a lady clockmaker before. Yeah, I didn't make things like this, uh, unfortunately. Wow. I'm not that clever. Yeah. It cost me had a big order to get out. I used to go around in the morning and get all the lads up and get them into work. Started. And because I'd done all that, my reward was to go to the factory that these were made in. Really? This was and having in... bought this off my boss, he was shocked when we got there to say this was an older model than his. Yeah. And he, he just lost his back. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was quite annoyed because this one was more valuable than his. Well, this is a beautiful clock, and it's an English-made one in Cheltenham. Yes, uh, that's right, yeah. Recently, they're making these in the Far East, the very cheap versions of these. This yeah. is a beautiful English-made one. Yeah. I must say, the quality of it is lovely. And it's all handmade. I, I watched the men oh, make yeah. these clocks. Yes. It's unbelievable how they make them. And this is a copy of the very famous clock by Harrison, the famous 18th-century clockmaker right, yeah. and watchmaker. And this is one of his inventions, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a man striving to make a perfect timepiece. It does keep absolutely perfect timing. Beautiful thing, isn't it? And it's so soothing to watch. Yeah, you know, it's, it's lovely. It's quite isn't hypnotising, it? isn't it? You'll be very sorry to see this go, won't you? I will. I Barbara. will, really, yeah, but needs must. I, just mm. I, I can't see the point of having it covered up. I'm very into clocks and always have Iron. been. I like clocks, but most of the collectors do want sort of older things than this. Yeah. This is how old, roughly? Well, I bought it in 82. In 1982? But I do believe it's older than that. Cause well, it's sound about... It's, 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 I was going to say it's probably 30 years old or something. Yeah, yeah. Now, Colin, a very handsome-looking clock. How do you see something as recent as this? And tell me what you think about it. I suppose, really, you've got to take it in the context of how the market has changed where we always are a little bit maybe a little bit prissy about things being antique and being modern um, but at the end of the day as long as something has that quality really the age doesn't matter that much i think probably i'm stuck in the in, in that old-fashioned antique dealer vein where even years ago if something was fairly modern it yeah. didn't quite fall within our our area of expertise and so we looked at it and said how wonderful, beautifully made, but still not antique and old enough for us to sell. Yeah. Uh, and we maybe have this barrier. We do, and, and, and I'm in that pool as well, because you know auctioneers always used to have antique sales and general sales. And there was that division, which was really based more upon age rather than quality of an item. So now you bring things together a little bit more in collective sales. Right. And something like that would be a prime lot in a collective sale. Do we know what was paid for this around the 1980s as a retail priced item? Well, you would certainly have been over the 2000 mark, so maybe 2002, 2004, something like that. And uh, so the retail price would have been quite high, certainly at that period. Where have you placed your estimation on this? Within the last couple of years, I mean, obviously it is a very rare clock, and so you're not going to find masses of information. No. Uh, one went for auction with a pre-sale estimate of 1,000 to 1,500. So I'm, I'm just going to take that as a good solid valuation for something of great quality, and let's see how the market uh, wants to react to it. Well, you've heard what Colin says, and I can tell you that the independent values have gone 1,000 to 1,200. Now, David sells watches and clocks, but I'm not as sure He's going to be too tempted with this. Let's see what he puts on the table. What's this worth, Barbara? He's Shall I get some money out and see, yeah. um, <laughs> see what you think? What about, for this very fine clock, 100, 150, 200 pounds? Is that any uh, interest? Buy the key. Bought the key, right, OK. <laughs> I've got the message. <laughs> 250. I really like this clock and I appreciate the quality of it, but I would find it a little bit difficult to sell versus an older version. Really? Well, let me just put you £300 there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's... Barbara, that's not exciting you, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> let me make it a little bit more exciting for you. Let's say £400. Barbara. So £400. Thoughts on that, Colin? I think it could be that it's just not going to be for him. Okay. I'm going to go in there and tell our seller it's far too low. It needs to go to an auction. There isn't enough money on the table. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. 
Nowhere near tempting, Dave. I, I think the situation here is our independent valuers and our auctioneers are saying 1,000 to 15, 1,000 to 12. It is what it is, a beautiful item, superbly and very skillfully made, but it is a modern item. I don't think that's anywhere near enough. You're going to have to reject that. Let's see if we can tick-tock and ring a few bells at the auction. Barbara, I've got to say, I think I would. Try my recommendation to you would be to try it through an auction. Right. Okay. You'll have fun. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much for bringing this clock in. It's lovely. You're and I'm sure it'll You're do welcome. well in the auction. It's thank you. Very, very nice. Thank you. So, um, I think the four hundred pounds to be beaten. The challenge is there, which I think we can rise to. Um, will it make over the thousand? Who knows? It's here in the sale room now with an estimate of a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. I'm going to say it's worth every penny of the thousand pounds. But is there someone here in the sale room who thinks the same thing? It's coming up now. A wonderful thing. Is it going to make the thousand quid? Thousand pounds, anybody? Thousand. Straight in, 1,000 bid at 1,000. We're on the market at 1,000. They've 1, got 1,000. 1,100 now, do I see? 1,100, do I see? Now, 1,100 bid, 1,200 bid, 1,300 bid, 14 now, do I see? 1,400, 1,400 bid. We're at 1,400 now. At 1,400, 1,450, 1,500, 1,550. We're at 1,550. It's looking good, Barbara. 1,550 pounds. At 1,550, we're all done at 1,550. Any more now, 16 to a seat. At 1,550, it's the last call then, selling at 1,550 pounds. 1,550 pounds was under the gavel. We do have some commission to take off, and I make that about just a little bit over 1,270 pounds. What's your first reaction? Brilliant. <laughs> Happy? Yes. Well, you know, it's been not a bad investment. What are you <laughs> going to do with all that money, Barbara? It's to fund Joe Longthorne. We go around all the country following really? him. Yeah. So you follow him all the time? Mm -hmm. You're one of his greatest fans. Yeah. So you follow him everywhere. So much so, £1,271 is going to be used following the great Joe Longthorne. <laughs> now that is the real deal. Well done, Barbara. You'll be dancing in the aisles. With nearly £1,400 offered up in the den, have our dealers been able to turn any into profit? It was a game of two halves. A bad day at the office for Jan and Dave. All of their items found their way to the sale room. I think I'd really like to take it to auction. I wish you all the best. Thank you. So this just leaves Hoggy and Cheryl. I don't like disappointing people with restoration, but that affected the price. I think we're both happy at that price. Hoggy clawed back a little profit on the cockatoo. And the same amount was made by Cheryl on the gold bracelet. Very nice, very pretty, and still in fashion today. Not something to be melted down. As for their remaining glass items, unfortunately, our dealers blew it. Both of them broke even. David definitely bullied me into this one. I did not want to pay £160. So the big winners today were our two sellers who opted to go to auction. The sale room netted them a grand total of £1,881. Good going, girls. We've got a great day here in Lincolnshire. Bags of action. Look at all the people here. Lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.